we're asked to consider the function f of x equals 12 times 1.45 to the x. There's a couple of things that I know about this function right away. First of all, I know that this is an increasing function because my b value or my base is 1.45. So I'm going to write 1.45 in here for the base. And I'm going to go down to this question and indicate that this is an increasing because my value for b is greater than 1. My initial value, that is the output that corresponds to an input of 0. Well, when input is 0 here, anything to the 0 power is 1, and I just get this number here, which is the a value that's part of my function. So that would be 12. My domain here, if I look at the kind of generic increasing function up here, I'm going to make this a little bit less generic and actually associate it with our function by labeling that initial value. The domain is all of the values for input that we can use as an exponent in this function. There are no limitations on numbers that I can use as exponents, so my domain, as you can see up here, I could write all real numbers, or I could use a different kind of notation, inequality notation, to indicate that my domain travels between negative infinity and infinity. So this says that my domain values, which are the x values, are greater than negative infinity, less than infinity. I could use also interval notation with parentheses instead of brackets because I can never reach infinity or negative infinity. This would be another way to write the same thing. The range has to do with the output values. So if you look at the graph up here, it's pretty clear that all of my outputs are above the x-axis. What's not so clear from the graph is whether or not I have any outputs that are actually on the x-axis. Well, for an output to be on the x-axis, I would need to be able to solve this equation set equal to 0. And if you think about the way exponents work, when I input a value for an exponent, I'm always going to get, first of all, a positive number, and second of all, a number that does not equal 0. So this will never be the case, meaning that my outputs are all going to be greater than 0. And that's what we have indicated also in our list of general characteristics at the top of the page. The horizontal intercept is asking me where the graph crosses the x-axis. So we kind of already went through that with looking at this equation here. The graph will never cross the x-axis. There is no horizontal intercept. The vertical intercept we know is the ordered pair that goes with the initial value, and I've already labeled that on the graph up here. And then the horizontal asymptote, what they're asking for is the equation of the horizontal line that is a guideline for the function. So if you look at the function here, this x-axis is a guideline for the function. It helps to draw the function using that as a guide. So the equation of the x-axis is y equals 0, and that is the equation of our horizontal asymptote. So you can see from this example how the characteristics of the general exponential growth function translate to a specific example.